as per usual, that brings us to the last ritual before we turn the page to the next week. That is the power rankings, obviously. Spoiler of spoilers. The Eagles remain number one. Yes, the 10-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles staying right there at the top where they belong. It's the everywhere else where we see the chaos. So we'll do what we always do. We will start down the bottom of the league, work our way up with the biggest movers and shakers. I feel guilty about what I did to the Cincinnati Bengals this week. I dropped them eight whole spots. It's not your fault, Bengals. You lost one of the best quarterbacks in football for the season. Jake Browning, not your fault either, but watching the Bengals struggle to 220 yards and 10 points against the Steelers, hardly inspiring stuff. The Bengals don't seem like a playoff contender. So even though they were all the way up at 15 last week, it's, it's just hard to lump them in with teams that are fighting for a playoff spot until proven otherwise. If Jake Browning catches fire or if this Bengals defense goes on a run carrying them, we can revisit this. But I think without Joe Burrow, we need the Bengals down in the 20s with the teams that we don't think are going to make any noise. It sucks. It's harsh. It's the brutal reality of the NFL. Bengals falling eight spots this week, up at 18, up five spots from last week. I'm look, I'm not from Wisconsin. I'm not a homer. I just I'm excited about this Green Bay Packers team. What do you want me to say? Beat the Chargers, then turned around and beat the Lions on Thanksgiving with the world watching. Jordan Love, five touchdowns, no picks over his last two starts. Finally looking like a guy who's figuring it out. The defense should be getting healthier in the coming weeks. They're right there. They're right there with the Vikings fighting for a wild card spot. Yeah, I mean... Part of the reason for that is because the NFC nowhere near as strong as the AFC, but the Packers took some lumps early in this season. And at least right now, they seem like they're coming out of it on the other side, a young team, a team that's gaining confidence. They're just a lot of fun to watch. I hope they continue this upward trajectory because there's just a lot of exciting young talent on that roster. Even higher than that, I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers up four spots from last week, mainly just because they showed signs of life on offense. We talked about it Monday, cracking the 400-yard threshold for the first time in what felt like forever. Kenny Pickett looked pretty good. They got Fryermuth involved. Look, it's not that the Steelers are all of a sudden a juggernaut, but they were right there in the thick of it with an awful offense terrible and they were still six and four so if they can build on that 400 yards they got to obviously score some more points they still only finish with 16 but if that's the starting point post Matt Canada maybe this offense can do enough to complement their defense and make the Steelers more of a legitimate threat two spots above that the five game winning streak they are 11th in the league the Denver Broncos I I'll be honest. I feel kind of weird about it. The none of the Broncos games have been particularly eye popping or impressive. I mean, the, the bills game was a mess. The Browns game was just a, a, a defensive struggle, but the Broncos keep finding ways to do it. And you can't argue with their resume. You can't argue with the quality of the teams that they're beating. Can't argue that Russell Wilson even if it's not the gaudy statistical numbers we remember from four or five, six years ago, he's playing clean football. Sean Payton has turned him back into a useful, viable quarterback. Broncos are a tough out. No, you don't want to play them. They're the type of team. That's just a pain in the ass. They're going to beat you up for 60 minutes. And at least for the last five weeks, nobody's been able to beat them. So they don't feel like a heavyweight, but their resume is as impressive as anybody's particularly over the last month or so I got him at number 11 number seven down five spots from last week I'll admit it I think I got a little too excited about the Detroit Lions maybe I should have been more concerned that the Bears offense just exploded on them than I was that they managed to come back I, I was excited about scoring 17 points in four minutes that's a hard thing to do against anybody but Lions play on Thanksgiving against Green Bay. It's time to officially be worried about their defense. They are struggling. They are giving up points. 
They are making people look very, very good. I still think the offense is wonderful. I think Jared Goff will eventually figure these turnover issues out, but you need to see more from their defense. And I, I said it Monday too. So many of the NFL's top teams keep winning. Like it was a very chalk heavy Sunday in the NFL. Most of the teams that we consider Super Bowl contenders took care of business. The Lions absolutely did not on their home field. So they deserve to fall for that. It is what it is. Finishing it off this week, top two are pretty predictable. Eagles and Ravens up at the top. But I've got the 49ers vaulting two spots into the three spot. I think what they did to Seattle on Thanksgiving night was a little bit more impressive than what the Chiefs did to the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday. Did not allow an offensive touchdown to Seattle. The offense is back to doing its thing. Number three in the league. I don't feel bad about it. It's like the three game losing streak never happened. And obviously that sets up a huge matchup. I'm going to give you a little spoiler alert for next week. The Ravens are off at number two. So whoever wins Eagles 49ers is going to be in the one spot when we do this again next week. Just a little spoiler alert for you. That's what's going to happen. I'll say it one more time. I cannot wait for that game. 